Today I'll be presenting the second practice problem in the third homework. To restate the problem, we're going to start with drawing a picture because that's really helpful here. We have a 1D wall that is insulated on one side. It extends infinitely up and down and in and out of the board again. This side right here is exposed to convection with a T infinity of 92 degrees. I'll write this down here, Celsius. And then that has a convection coefficient H of 400 watts per meter squared Kelvin. Okay. Uh, oh, right, to restate what this is in Kelvin, sorry, I'm going to write that up here, is 365 Kelvin is what 92 degrees is in Kelvin. Okay, inside this wall we have heat generation, which we always write using Q dot, and that is 0 0.4 megawatts per meters cubed. Okay, we also have a thermal conductivity K, which is 30 watts per meter Kelvin. All right, we know the length of this wall, which is 0 0.2 meters. And I think that's all the information we need to solve this problem. They're asking us here to find what is the maximum temperature we will see inside of this wall. OK, so that is our problem. The approach we're going to take is we're going to find first what is the surface temperature. So find what we will call TS, the surface temperature. And we're going to do that using a surface balance. And then we're going to find the maximum temperature, which we will call T0. And we're going to use our favorite friend, the heat diffusion equation, which I'll call HDE. OK, uh, I forgot to draw our energy balance, but it helped to write the approach first, so it makes sense why I'm drawing these. First, we're going to draw a control surface here on the outside surface. That is what we will use here to find our surface temperature using an energy balance. Then I'm going to draw a differential cubic element. Whenever I draw this, that represents using the heat diffusion equation, which is a balance on this cube of heat exchange. And we're going to use that to find the temperature profile. OK, so there's our energy balance. Let's go ahead and perform some analysis. OK, uh, we're going to redraw just a small chunk of this wall so we can kind of zoom in and see a little bit better what our energy balance is going to look like. OK, so again, this is our 1D wall. We're going to draw our control surface just like this. OK, so we're doing an energy balance on a control surface. What's leaving is convection. We have a T infinity. So we have Q convection leaving the wall. And then entering the wall, we have conduction. Now, we know heat is flowing this direction because energy is being generated inside the wall and this side of the wall is insulated. So since energy is being produced, thermal energy being produced, say, from electrical energy, we need to take that energy and it must leave. Because it can't go left, it has to go out this side. So now we just need to write these out with a surface balance, E in equals E out. So um, what's leaving is convection, Q convection. We always model that with Newton's law of cooling. Looks just like this. Our um, convective heat transfer coefficient times our difference in temperature. Here is what we're looking for, Ts. Now here's a tricky one, E in or Q conduction. How are we going to model that? Normally, we use Fourier's law of heat conduction which would be the derivative of our temperature profile evaluated at an x of L, or at this point in the wall. Our problem is we don't know the temperature profile yet. 
but there's a different approach we can take. Let's real quick look at this control volume being the entire wall. In this case, there's energy being generated, which I'll draw these little dots throughout this wall. So let's say every second, five joules of energy is being generated here. Now, all of that energy must be simultaneously leaving this control volume, or we would not be at steady state. If more energy is being added and added, the temperature will be going up. So what that means is we know that the amount of energy that must be leaving this control surface is equal to the amount of energy being generated inside of our control volume at any point in time. Well, we actually can calculate that. We know Q dot, which is our volumetric heat generation rate. By simply multiplying that by the length of our wall, we find the amount of energy generated along this line that must then exit out that surface. So that is simply written as Q dot L equals H T S minus T infinity. Uh, we know all of these terms except for T S, so rearranging we can solve for T S. And when we do that we find it is 565 Kelvin. That is the temperature of our surface. Now, the reason we even needed this is because we are now going to go to our heat diffusion equation. d squared t dx squared plus q dot over k equals zero. This tells us the temperature pro, um, how the temperature would vary in our 1D wall with heat generation. Uh, we're not going to cover how this would be solved, but the solution looks like this. Tx equals Q dot L squared over 2K times 1 minus X squared over L squared plus TS. Now you see why we needed to solve for TS first, because it's right here in the equation. So we actually know everything here, right? We know Q dot, we know L squared, we know K, uh, we know what the number 2 is, we know L. Uh, what do we do with X? Well, we're trying to find T max. The question is, where is the maximum temperature going to occur? Well, that we can intuitively reason out. Um, like we said, heat is always transferring in the right direction towards this surface of the wall. Now, heat must always transfer from hot to cold. That means that as we go the opposite direction against the flow of heat, we know the temperature must be increasing. So since energy is always flowing this way, the temperature must always be increasing until we hit the insulated wall. In other words, the maximum temperature is at the insulated wall. We know that X has its origin here at the insulated wall. So by plugging in X of 0, we can find the temperature at the insulated wall, which would be the maximum temperature. When you plug in 0, you're just left with Q dot L squared over 2K plus Ts. So when we evaluate that T of 0, we get 832 Kelvin, which is the maximum temperature. Likewise, the temperature at the surface is 565 Kelvin. Okay, that was our approach.